I thought we'd spend a little time learning how to tie the clove hitch. The clove hitch is the most useful fireworking knot. It's the one that's used pretty much exclusively and extensively in fireworking. You'll watch guys from the old Italian factories tying fireworks device nosings, quick match connections, uh, all sorts of uh, applications where the clove hitch knot is used. When I first got into this, I remember spending some time in my lazy boy practicing tying clove hitches as I watched a football game or Survivor. Yes, I'm that guy that watched Survivor. Learning how to tie a clove hitch is very, very handy. It's a knot that uh, tightens up on itself well. It can be secured then with an overhand knot and the ends clipped off and you've got a good secure permanent knot tied. Now as I watch those videos of the fireworkers making their clove hitches for the 4,327,000th time I say to myself how did he do that? He's doing it so fast I can't even I can't even see what he's doing. Um, so I thought I would slow it down use a larger rope and just demonstrate the clove hitch a little bit and then it's really going to be up to you to sit and practice uh, tying the clove hitch. There are a couple different ways to tie a clove hitch and I'll, I'll demonstrate at least two of those here. Um, this is my handy dandy rig for uh, testing uh, black powder by firing baseballs and I'll, I'll demonstrate tying a clove hitch. Lots of times we want to, if something is vertical, sitting out vertical like the connection between a shell leader and a spillet uh, nosing, um, if there is a uh, the fusing on a rocket motor, lots of times it will be sitting vertically like this. Um, I want to be able to slip a clove hitch quickly down over whatever is vertical. If I take my string and I make a loop like this, where my left hand, the rope coming into my left hand is over the rope coming to my right hand, then I make another loop like this, where my right hand, the rope coming into my right hand is under that rope, and then some people call that rabbit ears, and then I cross those over and slip it down over what I'm tying the clove hitch onto. I have a clove hitch. The only way you're going to get this is by doing it and doing it and doing it. Practicing under, under, and put the loops over, drop it down over something, see if you got it. It's almost harder for me to analyze and describe verbally than it is to just do it. I just put this rope under. I put it under again and then I put the loop over like that. So I would suggest you get something you can tie a clove hitch around and once again my left hand is over, my right hand is under, so I've gone under with the right hand, I've got un gone under with the right hand again and then I put the right hand loop over the left hand loop and tighten it. And then if I, if I do want to secure that with an overhand knot, I just tie an overhand knot like this and secure it, pull that tight, and then with my small string that will secure that knot very, very well. Once again, all I can say is sit in your lazy boy with something in front of you and practice tying that knot like this. Over and over and over. It, this knot comes in very, very handy. If I am, if I have something really, really long, like a connection of quick match from one shell to another in a chain, I can't so easily slip the knot down over something. Then what I do is I take a loose end, this loose end here, and I, I put it across the front here. 
I go around what I'm tying, around, the knot around, and I go under that loose end. Then I go around and through itself like this. And you see the essence of a clove hitch is this point where the loose ends are going under in opposite directions itself where it goes over like that. Once again a little harder to describe than it is to do but if I take the loose end like this and I have the loose end coming over to the right I go around and under that loose end in my right hand and then I go around and through itself like that I've got a clove hitch and the best way I found to learn that is was sitting in my chair going around and under the knot and then going around and through the knot and then tightening it up and I, I would sit there with a thin piece of string doing that over and over and over until I, it just became second nature I go around under the loose end and then around and through itself easier said than done with dry fingers come on it's easier to do with two hands tying it around something but there I've got a clove hitch that can then be secured with an overhand knot once again sitting there and over and over and over practicing the first method going under going under itself putting the loops over and putting them around something and tightening it up and just sitting there and practicing it over and over and over knowing what it should look like and then seeing if I accomplished it and the trick is to get this to the point where I can, I can go out in the field, I can be working on fireworks, and it just becomes second nature to drop a clove hitch under something. It just becomes second nature to have the loose end hanging over here. I come around, I come under it, I come around, I come through itself, and I've got a clove hitch. To, to, to have it become second nature to be able to do this, this is what we see the Italian fireworkers doing in the videos all day long. Um, and to just get to the point where I can do that without even thinking about it, it just becomes automatic habit, is a really important skill. It's going to come up in the next project uh, when we start making fountains and tying the fusing into the fountains. So I would suggest just watching this video, practicing it, seeing if I'm accomplishing it, and if I'm not, why not? What's What am I doing wrong? Um, and just to, just to practice it over and over and over until I know how to do a clove hitch, and then secure it with an overhand knot.